Now we need to note that there is a difference between auditing objectives and quality assurance objectives. Um, with quality insurance, you're trying to make sure that the system is bug free, uh, functional according to the specifications of uh, what it's supposed to do, how it's supposed to perform. Um, you can think of quality assurance as, safe as uh, ensuring that the product is not defective uh, as it's being produced. When you look at the auditing process, then it's ensuring that the system is working and complies with the different pol security policies, policy business policies, regulations, and the law set up. Of course, sometimes you have your performance monitoring, and with that, you're trying to observe at various uh, operational times. Uh, with the audit process flow, then the system, uh, you're going to look at it throughout the system development uh, life cycle. With the auditing process itself, um, you're going to understand what the objectives are. You're going to go through and review and verify and validate the system as you go. So you're going to look at uh, during the development time, during the end product, and during the revisions. Uh, to make sure everything lines up in your monitor and of course you're going to document your results. So when we're looking at developing our objectives, part of that uh, process is going to be selecting out the entity that's going to be audited. In order to do the selection you're going to look at uh, reasons uh, such as uh, compliance, um, maybe informing um, what activities are actually going on. Uh, it could be for planning, looking at uh, peak times, that sort of thing for performance and, and execution. Uh, so there'll be a variety of reasons. Um, for example, uh, you might look at statement auditing where it's going to audit uh, SQL statements by type uh, and not the uh, specific uh, schema objects to which they operate. Uh, you could be looking at privilege auditing. Uh, in that case, you're looking at the system privileges corresponding to certain actions. Um, with privilege auditing, it's more focused on statement auditing because the uh, audits only use the um, only use use of the target uh, privilege. And then you could have schema object auditing, in which case it's looking at statements on a particular schema object, and with that it's uh, very focused on auditing only a selected uh, statement on the specific schema object. So looking at your um, objectives, you could have one on uh, data integrity, in which case you're looking at the application users and the roles to uh, make sure how um, things are changed within there and that there's no issues uh, as far as making sure that the uh, data is accurate, uh, confidentiality. Once again, you might be looking at access control, who can get to it, uh, uh, making sure no unauthorized accounts can get to it. Uh, the data changes is important as far as uh, looking at your auditing. Uh, it could be one of your objectives. You could have uh, structure changes like creation of tables and such and updates. Um, you could look at availability of the database or the application, uh, peak times, that sort of thing. Uh, once again, the change control, uh, physical access, and then, of course, you have your uh, auditing reports that would tie into showing compliance uh, and meeting regulations and laws. Some of the key things about uh, auditing as far as the benefits is it's going to make sure that the company policies and government uh, regulations and laws are being met. Uh, it's also going to lower the incidence for the security violation. Uh, it's going to go through and it's going to show you where there's security gaps and vulnerabilities that you need to fix. Uh, likewise, you have your audit trail of your activities so you can see what's happening, what order, how it's happening, that sort of thing. Uh, it's going to provide you means to observe and evaluate the operations of, of whatever you're being, whatever is being audited, uh, whatever object. And this allows the organization to be more accountable for what's happening within the database and how it's happening. And then it uh, gives a chance to develop the controls that can be used for uh, 
purposes other than just auditing so you can make sure that the correct privileges are set on accounts uh, that the correct the correct uh, setup is done on different objects now I mentioned before some places have weak audits or audit trails and such and one of the reasons this can happen is because audits will have a impact on the performance um, anytime you do anything you're going to be using resources uh, likewise, you could end up with too many reports and documents, and therefore it makes it uh, extremely hard to dig through and actually see what's going on. So you want to make sure that you're uh, selecting the correct things to be audited, the correct actions, uh, procedures, uh, the different objects. And, of course, uh, it can uh, give a disruption to the operations um, of whatever entity or object is being audited. And then I mentioned performance relates to consumption of resources, and with that, then you also have to think about costs from uh, the downtime. Now, there's a variety of different auditing models that you can use. So your simple auditing model one would be registering the audited uh, entities in the audit model repository. You would look at it chronologically, tracking the activities performed. Um, you could be looking at the user, the table, or the column. Uh, with that, then the DML trans, uh, transaction or log on and log off times would be recorded. Um, you'd have uh, controlling columns as a placeholder for the data inserted automatically when a record is created or updated, like the date and time when it's created and updated. Uh, with that then um, the CTL, the control pre prefix, can be used to indicate it or to notarize, note it. Now if you look at the simple audit method uh, model 2 then uh, you're doing um, your auditing where you're storing only the column value changes and with that you have a mechanism that's purging and archiving um, that's going to reduce the amount of data that's being stored so you know ease back on the resources uh, being consumed by the audit uh, it's not going to register an action that was performed on the data it's ideal for um, just auditing a column or two of a table uh, so different function different use you can have your advanced model um, with the repository being more complex uh, with that then you would register all the entities uh, using uh, the fine grade uh, auditing level and you could handle different uh, users, actions, tables, and columns and as, it, as you would think it's going to use more resources to um, use this approach on your mo model for your auditing. So just wanted to uh, look at some different uh, terms that are used because sometimes it gets a little confused and people switch swatch, um, <laughs> swap different terms but when you talk about auditing and audit you're looking at examining and validating different documents for the business the data and the procedures um, different processes in the system the log then is going to document it's going to be the document that's going to take, contain the activities that are being audited ordered in chronological manner so you can look at step one this happened the next this happened next this happened uh, the objectives then are going to be your set, set of business rules, uh, con system controls, uh, security policies and such that you are trying to uh, accomplish looking at through your audit um, and once you figure out what your objectives are you can set up your procedures and that will be the instructions for the auditing process itself. The trail then would be the actual record of documentation um, of the changes that occurred, the data changes, system activities, uh, operational events. So it's actually going to be your records that you will pull from for your reports. So we've briefly gave, um, gone through an overview of the auditing fundamentals. Uh, with the audit you're going to examine, verify, and validate different documents, procedures, and processes. Make sure that your company policies and business rules are lined up. Um, the environment can cons uh, consists of having your objectives formed so you know what you're trying to accomplish, the procedures to do it, the people involved in it, and then uh, what exactly you're auditing the entities, what you're looking at. Uh, 
it's going to make sure the audit's going to make sure that the system is working and complies with the policies and standards, the different regulations and laws. Um, the auditing objectives uh, are established during the developmental phase, you know, so that's the first thing you're going to do. And then the objectives are going to tie back with the compliance and forming, planning, and executing. Um, so that you can do the comparison and, and uh, be able to monitor what's happening.